Last Thursday, on September 8, 2022, we have heard the sad news that the Queen of Britain, Queen Elizabeth II, has passed away. He is the longest reigning monarch in Britain's history. Queen Elizabeth II reigned for 70 years and 214 years. That's how long she served. If there's one powerful legacy she left in this world, it was her legacy of selfless sacrifice and service to those with whom she served. There's no doubt that Queen Elizabeth II has lived a life of service to his people. And I want to repeat what, he, uh, what she had said in the video. This was said when she was still um, a princess at that time. She said, I declare before all of you that my whole life, whether it be long or short, and I, we could see that it was very long, shall be devoted to your service and the service of our great imperial family to which we all belong. And during the 25th year of, his, of her reign, she mentioned, When I was 21, I pledged my life to the service of our people, and I asked for God's help to make good that vow. Although that vow was made in my salad days, when I was praying judgment, I do not regret, nor retract, one word of it. Those are the beautiful words of Queen Elizabeth. Brethren, Queen Elizabeth is one of the greatest examples of being a servant leader. When, at age 19, Queen Elizabeth, who was still a princess at the time, joined the Auxiliary Territorial Service, or the ATS, during the Second World War. She learned to repair vehicles. And did you know that at that time, she was dubbed or called as the Princess Auto Mechanic because of her service during that time. And she was the only female member to this point of the, of the royal family who have ever served in the military. So we could just see the heart of service of this lady. And though, brethren, she is a very good example of service, we know that there is one who is a perfect example of serving. And we, I want to invite you, brethren, to read Matthew 20, verse 25 to 28. Matthew 20, verse 25 to 28. We read, But Yahshua called them to himself and said, You know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them. Or if you read the King James Version, it says, Wants to have dominion over them. And those who are great exercise authority over them. You see, brethren, when you said the Gentiles, their main goal is to have dominion. Their main goal is to have authority over other people. That's how tyrants and evil rulers and leaders rule over their subordinates. That's the common definition of leadership. You just think about the supreme leader of North Korea. Just think about his example. You see, this person measures his greatness based on how much power he yields. And that's the worldly kind of leaders that we have. That the more power, the more influence, the more wealth that you have, the greater you will be. But that is not the case for us Christians, the true followers of Yahshua. In verse 26 we read, Yet it shall not be among you. Yahshua just explained what a leader is through the Gentile nations. And he, and he said, that's not how we should work. That, that is not how we should lead. But whoever desires to become great among you, let him be your servant. That is just mind-blowing. It just ran through a, a, a total contradiction to how this world defined leaders. Yahshua was saying that if you want to be great, then you have to serve. If you want to be a leader, then you have to serve. If you want to influence others, then you have to serve. It doesn't come by wielding too much power. And that is what Yahshua was saying here explain to his disciples. They say, 
Leaders are not supposed to be like that. Leaders are born to lead, not to serve. The more leaders are served, the greater they are. Isn't that right? Isn't that how the world defines leaders? Yet that's not what Christ teaches us. He said that if you want to be great, then you have to serve. Here we read the greatest example of serving in verse 27. Let's continue reading. And do ever desires to be first among you. If you want to be great, if you want to be first among, among your brethren, among your people, then let him be your slave. Just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom for men. Did you see that, brethren? A leader did not come to be served, but to serve. What a powerful statement from our Master and Savior. You see, brethren, the Jewish people thought that the Messiah is someone who is going to restore the glory of Israel. He will come as a king, not a child in a manger. That's why they missed the Messiah, even though he was just plain, he was just in plain sight. The first coming of the Messiah, brethren, wasn't meant to overthrow the world government. His life was meant to become a life of service and performing the greatest service for mankind, which is to lay down his life for us. Because of that, brethren, I want to call you, I want to call all of you to serve, to have the attitude of service, to have the initiative to be part of something greater than yourself, to have the heart of a volunteer, Someone is not motivated by selfish gains and money. This reminds me of Galatians 5 verse 13, brethren. Let's go there. Galatians 5 verse 13. It says there, For you, brethren, have been called to liberty. Only do not use liberty as an opportunity for the flesh. I want you to notice this, brethren. But through love, serve one another. If you have been asking yourself, brethren, how can I serve other people? Here's the, here's the answer. You have to serve others with love. Brethren, if we have love in our hearts, if we truly love one another, then we will serve one another. It will motivate us. It will motivate us to serve one another. Let me just give you an example. Have you ever asked yourself, why your wife or your mother keeps on waking up each day to prepare breakfast for you? Why does, she do, why does she do the laundry, clean the house, and take care of the family? Why does she do all of these things without even getting paid? You know what, brethren? Because of love. Because of love, brethren, that because she loves you and the family, she doesn't need someone to wake her up. She does it voluntarily. Nobody needs to, Mommy, wake up, wake up. You have to, to prepare our breakfast. Automatic, when you get up in the morning, uh, the, the breakfast is already served or your mother is already, way, is already awake, sir, um, trying to prepare your food, doing the laundry, doing everything in the house. Why, brethren? Because of love. And that's the kind of love that we should have, brethren. We don't wait for other people to tell us to, to arrange a flower, to set up the home. We don't wait for other people to say, pick up the garbage. We don't wait for other people to say, open the door for other people. We don't do that, brethren, because if you have love, if you truly have love in your heart, brethren, it will motivate you to have the initiative to serve one another. You don't have to be told. It is automatic because... You are motivated by love. Yes, brethren, it is true that serving takes a lot of pressure. It takes a lot of energy and time. But brethren, as this might be the case, there's the, the more a person serves, the more he or she will feel blessed. Have you, ever, have you ever observed that, brethren? That the more a person serves, the more he will feel blessed. I believe this is one of the most remarkable spiritual laws that God has set. That the more you serve other people, the more you feel blessed. During the Sabbath, 
during the feast, or any day of the week, brethren. You don't have to be a minister. You don't have to be a pastor or leader of the church to serve. Everyone can contribute to the success and growth of our church. No matter what station or office you hold, you can always give something to make the church truly wonderful. Never ever underestimate, brethren, the small things that you can do, especially for the young children, the young, the young people of the church. Don't think that you are too small, too, 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 too young to serve. Because, brethren, even the small things, when God combines them all together, will become big and great. So don't ever underestimate the small things that you can do. Because God can use those small things for His greater purpose. Just like Queen Elizabeth, brethren, strive to live a life of service. Make it your magnificent obsession. Make it your passion. The more you serve, brethren, the more you will feel fulfilled. Stop being a spectator and start being a doer. Remember, brethren, I want you to take note of this. We can all serve without loving, but we can never love without serving. Let me repeat, brethren. We can all serve without loving, but we can never love without serving. It is not enough to just do a one-time big action. Service ought to be such a part of us that it defines us of who we are. When people think about us, they think of a person who serves other people. It must not be just directed to just a few individuals or a few groups. It must be done to anyone who needs help. Keep in mind, brethren, that Yeshua died for everyone and not just a select group of people. If you truly want to be happy, brethren, then serving is the answer. Life is good, yes, if you are happy, but life is at its best when you serve. Brethren, when you make other people happy, happiness will eventually find its way back to you. This is something that I always have proven in my life, time and time again. Yes, brethren, most people might not appreciate what you're doing or might not remember it, but God is there. He is faithful to remember all these things, that good work, the good works that we have done. That's why, brethren, I want to close with this scripture. Hebrews 6, verse 10, brethren. Let's go there. Hebrews 6, verse 10. It says, For God is not unjust to forget your work, and labor of love. So God will not forget these things that we have done, which you have shown toward His name, and that you have ministered to the saints and do minister. So brethren, we do this not just for other people, but we also do this for God. Live a life of service. Be an inspiration and be a blessing. And at the end of your life, brethren, I can assure you that you will be living a wonderful life. With all this said, brethren, I want to call you once again to live a life of service.